A Sesame Street Christmas by Pat Tornborg. Pictures by Tom Cook. Featuring Jim Henson's Sesame Street Muppets. A golden story book and tape as told by me, Big Bird, and by my friend, Oscar the Grouch. That's me. <laughs> okay, every time you hear this sound, you'll know that it's time to turn the page. Are you ready to begin? Find the page where you see my friends and me under my big umbrella. Christmas was just a week away, and it was raining when I splashed into the park. I found the gang from Sesame Street gathered under Big Bird's umbrella. Why all the long faces, I asked. I can't build my Bert snowman, said Ernie. I can't count the snowflakes, said the Count. Me no eat snow cones, said Cookie Monster. And then everyone nodded and looked miserable. So I said, this is just great. Nobody has any of that Christmas spirit they're always nagging me about. It's going to be a damp and gloomy holiday, after all. Whoopee! <laughs> but Betty Lou didn't agree with me. She said, not so fast, Oscar. We're not giving up on Christmas spirit yet. Come on, everybody. Let's go to my house for some milk and cookies. Ah, uh, all this Christmas spirit jazz is making me sick. Big Bird, you take over. Sure, Oscar. So we went to Betty Lou's house, and everyone ate six cookies and drank two glasses of milk and felt a little cheerier. Who cares about the rain, said Bert. Let's have a terrific Christmas anyway, said Ernie. Let's sing Christmas carols and tell stories, said Betty Lou. I said, sure, I can read you a Christmas poem right now. My granny bird reads it to me every Christmas. It's about the time there was too much snow for Christmas. Listen. The night before Christmas on Sesame Street. "'Twas the night before Christmas on Sesame Street, and a stormy one, too, with the snow and the sleet. All the kids in the neighborhood, snug in pajamas, were saying good night to their papas and mamas. The house was all quiet at Ernie and Bert's, as they climbed into bed in their cozy nightshirts. And even outside, everyone was at rest, the grouch in his can, and I in my nest." There was one little house where not all was so comfy. T'was the home of that famous magician named Mumphy. He feared that the blizzard would keep Santa away, and he thought of a bleak Christmas morn with dismay. This storm might be too much for Santa, he said, so I'll conjure some toys for the children instead. Then he snatched up his wand, and before he could say, a la peanut butter sandwiches, he was on his way. A little past midnight, Ernie jumped out of bed. He'd been jolted awake by a thump overhead. As he peered at the roof, he said, Gee, Bert, that's funny. I thought Santa had reindeer, but that looks like a bunny. Ernie raced to the living room, just as a foot had emerged from the chimney all covered with soot. The body that followed was equally grubby, said Ernie, why this Santa's not even chubby. His face is all dirty, his cloak's black as night, but I always thought Santa wore red and white. He has only a stick poking out of his pouch, and these gifts should have gone to Oscar the Grouch. Ernie hopped back in bed and was soon sound asleep but poor Mumford had other appointments to keep. With his team of white rabbits, the brave little wizard continued his trip through the terrible blizzard. Mumphy's magic did wonders on that Christmas Eve, but the gifts it created were hard to believe. There was seed for a bird by the Count's Christmas tree, 
and the sneakers for me were only size three. Little Grover had hoped for a new teddy bear, but his gift was a ribbon for Betty Lou's hair. And if you think that Grover was pretty unlucky, Bert's soap dish was intended for poor Rubber Ducky. As the morning came, Mumford drove home through the drifts. He had made all his rounds, given everyone gifts. So imagine his shock when he walked in to see a fat, jolly old man sitting there by his tree. Mumford, my friend, Santa said with a smile, I've been two steps behind you for quite a long while. Though you made some unusual gift selections, you've done a fine job with my little corrections. I followed your sleigh and erased all your traces. You left all the right gifts, but in all the wrong places. I just made a few switches so no one would know that old Santa Claus was held up by the snow. But the meaning of Christmas is not gifts, my boy. It's the impulse to do things that bring others joy. Though your magical wand can't do anything right, the true magic of Christmas was with you tonight. With a nod of his head and a wink of his eye, Santa hopped in his sleigh and took off for the sky. He was heard to exclaim as he flew out of sight, a la peanut butter sandwiches! And to all, a good night. When I finished reading the poem, Betty Lou said, Thanks for that poem, Big Bird. Now I'm not worried about the rain or the snow. Then Grover said, Oh, neither am I. Christmas is Christmas, whatever the weather. And I think Grover was right, don't you? No, Bird, I don't think Grover was right. Christmas is much better when the weather is crummy. <laughs> Anyhow, I've got my own Christmas story to tell. I call it Oscar's Christmas Carol, a dickens of a story. <laughs> now listen. Bah humbug, I said loudly, just as Big Bird and Betty Lou walked by. Bah humbug! I said again as they stopped to stare. Whatever that means, it sure sounds grouchy, said Betty Lou. What's the matter, Oscar? Nothing's the matter, I answered. Everything's great. I'm reading a terrific story about a mean old fellow named Mr. Scrooge. He hated Christmas, so he said, Bah humbug, all the time. He sounds just like my Uncle Smarmy. Why, he might even be a relative of mine. <laughs> How could anyone hate Christmas? Asked Betty Lou. Everyone is good and kind at Christmas. And there are good things to eat, and songs to sing, and presents to give. Christmas is a happy time, Oscar. Bah humbug, I replied. Mr. Scrooge had a way of fixing that. Not only was he miserable himself, but he ruined everyone else's Christmas, too. He even made his helper, Bob Cratchit, work on Christmas Eve. Boy, that's a real grouch for you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, said Bird. I know that story. It's a Christmas carol by Mr. Charles Dickens. Maria read it to me last Christmas, and guess what, Oscar? It has a happy ending. How could it? I asked. I was disgusted. This guy Scrooge was such a great grouch. He's my hero and inspiration. I want to be just like him. Well then, said Bird, you'll have to stop being a grouch because that's what Scrooge did. He had a dream that showed him how wrong he had been about Christmas. You should read the rest of the book, Oscar. And I said, bah humbug, as I disappeared into my trash can. I can't think of anything that's dumber. To a grouch, Christmas is a bummer. Me 
some faces everywhere Happiness is in the air I'm telling you it isn't fair I hate Christmas People load it with goodwill Giving presents, what a thrill That slushy nonsense makes me ill I hate Christmas I'd rather have a holiday Like normal grouches do Instead of getting presents They take presents back from you <laughs> Come Santa, girls and boys So who needs that big red noise? I'll tell him where to leave his toys I hate Christmas And if you want the truth I ain't so crazy about Easter and Labor Day either <laughs> Christmas carols to be sung Decorations to be hung Oh yeah, well I stick out my tongue I hate Christmas Christmas bells play loud and strong my ears all that ding dong besides it goes on much too long i hate christmas i'd rather have a holiday with a lot less joy and flash with a lot less cheerful smiling and a lot more dirty trash yeah christmas day is almost here when it's over then i cheer i'm glad it's only once a year i hate christmas and whoever hung that mistletoe over my A little later, Bird passed my trash can on his way home from Betty Lou's house. I shouted, Merry Christmas, Bird, as I popped out of the can. So, Bird looked at me in surprise. He said, Why, Oscar, you changed your mind. You must have had a dream, just like Mr. Scrooge did. And now, you're not going to be a grouch anymore. And I said, ho, 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 no, 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 that's not what happened. I was giving that silly book with a happy ending to the trash man just after you left, and he reminded me that Christmas is a holiday. Do you know what that means, Bird? Bird answered, sure, a holiday is a day when everyone is good and kind and celebrates. I had to interrupt. No, no. It means that there's no trash pickup that day. And I get to keep my wonderful trash one more day. What a gift. Merry Christmas, birds. Gee, Oscar, that was a really grouchy story. Christmas isn't a grouchy time. It's a merry time. So let me tell a happy story, because that's what Christmas is all about. Here it is. It's called a rap session. Early one Christmas Eve, not so long ago, everyone on Sesame Street gathered to wrap presents before the big Christmas party. But nobody had remembered to bring any wrapping paper or ribbons. Just then, Oscar the Grouch arrived with his gifts all wrapped up in newspaper and tied with bits of old string. Betty Lou said, Hey, Oscar, what a good idea. We don't need fancy paper and ribbons. We can wrap our presents with all kinds of things we find around the house. Just as we were finishing wrapping the gifts, Prairie Dawn looked out the window. She cried, Oh, look! It's snowing! It's going to be a white Christmas after all! Let's go caroling! And that's just what we did. Here's what we sang. On the first day of Christmas, my Trudeau sent to me one delicious cookie. On the second day of Christmas, my Trudeau sent to me two baby frogs. What kind of job present is that, man? And one delicious cookie. And one delicious cookie. Oh. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me 
four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me five argyle socks, four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. On the seventh day of Christmas, someone sent to me seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears, three footballs. Two baby frogs and one delicious cookie. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eight counts of counting. Ha <laughs> ha! I love them all. Seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears. Two baby frogs and one delicious cookie. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me nine pounds of birdseed, eight pounds of counting, seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. Eight counts of counting, seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eleven broken buildings, ten wind up rabbits, nine pounds of birdseed, eight counts of counting, seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, <laughs> four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, and one delicious cookie. <laughs> Buildings, ten wind up rabbits, nine pounds of birdseed, eight counts of counting, seven rusty trash cans, six rubber duckies, five argyle socks, four woolly bears, three footballs, two baby frogs, one delicious cookie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Have a grouchy Christmas! <laughs>